Today I'm excited to dive into the wonderful world of gouache with you. I'll be painting a lobster claw plant using a reference photo I took during my recent trip to Kew Gardens. In this video I'll cover everything you need to know about different type of gouache paint, what paper and brushes to use, basic painting techniques, color mixing, along with some helpful tips. Hi, I'm Jo, a full-time artist and I created this channel to share my skills and experiences to support others on their creative journey. Gouache is an opaque watercolour paint that is known for its versatility and vibrant colours. These properties make it very popular among artists, illustrators and designers. Good quality professional grade gouache paint comes in tubes. There are many brands to choose from and they are all pretty good. But I always recommend getting a professional grade paint, even if you are a beginner. You don't need to get a big set. I just started with the smallest available set of designer gouache by Windsor & Newton. There are two types of gouache you can get, traditional and acrylic. Both are water soluble and you don't need to use them with any special mediums. Traditional gouache has more similarities to watercolour, while acrylic gouache is a little bit more like acrylic paint but it feels less plasticky and has a lovely matte finish when it dries. The main difference between the two types of gouache is what happens when the paint dries. A dried traditional gouache can be reactivated with water, but you won't be able to do the same with the acrylic gouache. Once it dries, it dries permanently. Another important difference is drying time. Acrylic gouache dries fast, sometimes even too fast, especially in a sunny and hot weather. This is something to consider if you're living somewhere with a hot and dry climate. With traditional gouache, you have more time to work using wet in wet techniques, but on the other hand, you have to be a little bit more patient and wait for the paint to dry completely before you're adding the final highlights and details. These differences will also affect the choice of color mixing palette. When I paint with traditional gouache, I use a typical watercolor palette. I even started to take traditional gouache paint with me on outdoor sketching trips and holidays. When painting with acrylic gouache, it is best to use color mixing palettes designed for acrylic paint. I just tend to use a tearaway wax paper palette as they are very convenient, but you can also use ceramic plates if you don't mind washing them after each use. Plastic palettes are not suitable for acrylic gouache. When it's a hot day, I sometimes use a homemade stay wet palette. I simply place the wax paper on the top of a damp paper towels inside a plastic box with a lid. You may now wonder how to choose the type of gouache you want to paint with. I recommend buying both types. Just get a couple of colours of each and try them out before committing to a larger purchase. I personally use both types, depending on the type of work I want to create. I like to use traditional gouache when I want to paint more seamless and smooth gradients, and acrylic gouache when I use more defined brush strokes and glazes. You can also use both types of gouache in one artwork by layering traditional gouache on the top of acrylic one, and vice versa. If you'd like to watch a longer demo of traditional versus acrylic gouache, leave a comment below and I'll create one in the future. Now that we know the main differences between two types of gouache, it's time to talk about paper and brushes. Let's talk about paper first. I tried many types of paper for my gouache sketches and illustrations. In my opinion, good quality watercolor paper works best. I love cold press watercolor paper. It absorbs the paint better and it also leaves the beautiful paper texture. But if you don't like the texture, you can always use the hot press paper. It will still work very well. Now let's talk about sketchbooks. If you want to use a gouache in a sketchbook, I also recommend getting one with a suitable paper. If you can get a watercolor one, it will work really well. Especially if you're a beginner, getting a sketchbook with a good quality and resilient paper will help you develop your skills. On the other hand, I wouldn't get anything that is so expensive and precious that will stop you from creating. There are also great mixed media sketchbooks out there. I recently purchased this mini sketchbook by Royal Talents and it works with gouache very well, as long as you don't use too much water. Let's talk about brushes. Even though gouache is an opaque version of watercolor, I wouldn't recommend using your finest watercolor brushes as they will be ruined very quickly, particularly if you're planning to use acrylic gouache. 
you need to get something more robust and resilient. Synthetic brushes with a good bristle bounce work best. You can test it by bending the brush bristles and see how fast they bounce back. I usually work with a large flat brush, the medium sized filbert brush and two round brushes, one medium and one small. I will leave the list to the brushes I use in the description to this video. When I sketch outdoors, I just use water brushes, one large and one small for details. Let's talk about gouache painting techniques. If you ever painted with watercolors, you are familiar with the light to dark painting technique. You had to preserve the white and the light colors by carefully painting around shapes or using masking fluid. With gouache paint, you don't really have to worry about it. You can use white gouache on the top of dark colors. There is, however, another principle that you need to follow. The gouache needs to be painted from thin to thick. What it means is that you typically start with the washes of color for backgrounds and shadow areas, and gradually mixing less and less water, you'll be moving into painting details and then final highlights. The best way to practice this is to do a little exercise. Just squeeze a little bit of paint straight from the tube onto a palette and start with just a dry or very, very lightly damp brush and paint a shape. This is called a dry brush technique. Great for adding textures. Now add a tiny bit of water to the paint and create another shape. And then carry on by adding more and more water to your brush and see the difference it makes to the textures and the shape edges. By practicing like this, you can quickly learn how to control the amount of water you need for your gouache painting. Let's talk about colors and color mixing. I mentioned earlier that I started with just the smallest set of gouache that had the following colors, yellow, red, and blue, white, and black. I think it was also a green color, but I prefer to mix my own greens and I don't think I used it a lot. This is enough to play and start with using gouache. If you want to expand your palette, you can buy both warm and cold hues of the same primary colors. And with a good quality paint that is highly pigmented, you will be able to mix a very bright and vivid hues by mixing two or even three colors together. It is also the easiest way to create a unified color palette for your illustration. Not to mention, it is also most cost-effective way to buy paint of any kind. And I learned it the hard way. I've recently purchased this set of acrylic gouache on sale and I quickly realized my mistake. As you can see, the tubes are quite small and there are colors in this set that I will rarely use. My money would have been better spent on the bigger tubes of individual colors. You've probably seen artists using gouache in mixed media sketches and illustrations. Because gouache dries to a matte finish, it creates a perfect base for combining with colored pencils, crayons and pastels. I love using colored pencils on the top of my gouache sketches and add details and create another layer of texture. You can also use ink and markers if you prefer more defined lines in your artworks. Gouache is a fantastic medium, especially well suited for small scale artworks and sketches. The best way to get to know this medium, or in fact any medium, is through play and practice. If you decide to buy and try gouache paint, try both types. Try different types of paper and brushes. Experiment with painting different shapes, lines and adding different amounts of water. Mix your own colors, create color charts. Also use other materials in your gouache paintings to create contrast, textures and define edges. I hope you found these tips and techniques helpful. Remember, practice makes perfect. So keep experimenting and have fun with your gouache paintings. As always, if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching and happy painting!